the practice that I encourage you all to try is to, is very brief, is, you know, these days we know we're being bombarded with tons of content. We essentially walk around with little TVs, like little TVs all the time. We're like, what? And then we're like, I don't know why I can't focus. Well, you're watching TV <laughs> all the time, you know? Um, and, you know? And, but our brains are very context dependent. The way to think about the way your brain works is that, in certain states of mind, you're like a, your, your mind and your focus is like a ball bearing on a flat surface, and it can go anywhere if you tilt that surface. As you get more focused, imagine little dimples in that surface, and it can drop into any one of those dimples. And the thing that we're all seeking is for the ball bearing to drop into a deep trench and be locked there for as long as we want and then out. But typically, it's the other way around. It's we get locked into these states that are either because it, our emotions have been grabbed by something external or because, you know, we're upset about something and so on and so forth. And it's very hard for us to get that ball bearing down into the trench of the thing that we know we need to do. And so the practice that I've been developing for myself is one in which I acknowledge this. I acknowledge that the world is noisy. My brain is noisy. And I have a practice now of about one to three minutes. And believe it or not, I just scripted it out onto a voice memo. I do believe that when we do it in our own voice, and I encourage you all to do it in your own voice, it's more powerful than listening to someone else's voice. Because after all, it's your voice. And I highly recommend recording three voice memos or four voice memos. The first one is one that you, you tell yourself, there's a lot of noise in my head. There's a lot of noise in the world. And I'm going to get distance from that noise. And for me, the visual is one thing. I can share it with you. But for you, it might be another where I just imagine the noise moving further and further away. I'm still acknowledging I'm in the world and it's happening, but it's sort of like ripples moving further and further away. After about three minutes, I shift to a different voice memo, which is, this sounds so crazy, but knowing what I know about the brain, I figure it's you know, not quite as crazy, which is then I listen to a one to three minute script about focusing, which is really to try and acknowledge that focus is something that constantly drifts until we're in a flow state that we, that focus is a process of redirecting our attention, redirecting, redirecting, redirecting. I had Alex Honnold on the podcast, right? The guy that we were all terrified to watch free solo up El Cap, probably more than yeah, he was yeah. amazing. It, it's, that's the craziest movie. It, we know he lives like from the first frame of the movie yeah, yeah. and it's still terrifying. Yeah. But you know, in that state, he's got so much to anchor his mind that I doubt he's pushing away lack of focus. But for most of us, because it's not life or death circumstances, you have to acknowledge that you are constantly pushing away things and you have to refocus, refocus, refocus. It turns out people that are very good at accessing flow states have powerful activation of what's called the no-go pathway. There are two pathways of action in the brain in a, a brain circuitry called the basal ganglia, a number of different brain areas. One is go, like to generate movements or thoughts. The other is no-go, to try and suppress movements or thoughts. Flow states are mainly accessed, mainly, by the no the no-go process. So the more you can shift out of your mind cynicism and try and redirect, for instance, to curiosity, the more you're in a no-go that way, yes, that way. So there's second short script is what I use to visualize focus. And sometimes I actually will think about Alex's climb as a, a kind of a, um, the, the pinnacle of an example of focus. And then I'll go into something I really need to do. And now, this might sound silly or overly structured, but I'll tell you what's really silly. What's really silly is that voice in my head saying, hey, you should do this thing. Now I got to do this thing. Oh, wait, there's a text message. And then three hours later, you're a little fatigued and you need lunch. And then you're a little fatigued because you ate lunch. And then the next thing you know, the thing didn't get done. So I'm talking about a one to three minute investment to clear clutter, get distance. That's it. That's it. Get distance from noise. A one to three minute script to acknowledge the focus process and get into And then to do the thing, you know, that's thing about that we procrastinate the thing that we can just avoid until it becomes a deadline or it's terrifying or it's past. Now here's the real key to plasticity. Those steps are required, but the real key is when you finish out what you're doing, your, your focused work on whatever is most important to you. At some point later that day, you need to reflect on what happened in that work bout. 